Hello everyone, welcome to another anatomy tutorial. Where this time I am going to be focusing on the posterior view of your skull. And what I am going to be doing is looking at the posterior view of the skull and describing the different structure that can be seen from this view. Now you can see the posterior view of skull. And we are going to try to describe all these structures that are important now as I mentioned. The posterior view of skull show us the important bone that maintain the integrity of skull. The posterior surface protects the region of the brain that contains the occipital lobe and cerebellum. Extend from the squamous part of temporal bone and palm a giant with zygomatic. The occipital bone is the single bone that forms the posterior skull and the posterior base of the cranial cavity. Now look at this picture. On its outside surface, at the posterior midline is a small protrusion called the external occipital protuberance, which serves as an attachment site for a ligament of the posterior neck. Lateral to the other side of this pump is a superior nuchal line. Look at this area. This area is the superior nuchal line. The nuchal line represents the most superior point at which muscles of the neck attach to the skull. With only the scalp covering the skull above this line. On the base of the skull, the occipital bone contains the large opening of the foramen magnum, which allow, which allow for passage of the spinal cord as it extends the skull. On the other side of the foramen magnum is an oval shaped occipital condyle. This is the occipital condyle. These condyle form joint with the first cervical vertebra and those support the skull on the top up. Vertebral column. The pterygoid bone form most of the upper lateral side of the skull. These are pair bones with the right and left pterygoid bone joining together at the top of the skull. Each pterygoid bone is also bounded anteriorly by the frontal bone, inferiorly by the temporal bone, and posteriorly by the occipital bone. Look at the occipital bone. The occipital bone is an unpaired bone which covers the back of the head. It makes up a large portion of the basilar part of the narrow cranium and entirely houses the cerebral. The cerebellum. The temporal bone forms the, low, the lower lateral side of the skull. The temporal bone is subdivided, the subdivided into several regions. The flattened upper portion of the squamous portion of the temporal bone. Below this area and the projecting anteriorly is the zygomatic process of the temporal bone, which forms the posterior portion of the zygomatic arch. Posteriorly is the mistired portion of the temporal bone projecting inferiorly from this region. This region is a large, this region is a large prominence, the mistired process, which serves as a muscle attachment site. The mistired process can easy, easily be felt on the side of the head, just behind your earlobe, and the interior of the skull, the filtrous portion of each temporal bone form the prominent. The prominent and the filtrous ridge in this floor of the cranial cavity located inside each petrous ridge are small cavities that house the structure of the medial the medial and inner ear the spinoid bone is a single complex bone of the central skull this is a spinoid bone it serves as a keystone bone because it giant with almost every other bone of the skull the spinoid form much of the base of the central skull and also extend laterally to contribute to the side of the skull. Inside the cranial cavity, the right and left laser wing of the spinoid bone. The, the, left and, the left and right laser wing of spinoid bone, which resemble the wing of flying bird, form the left prominent ridge that marks the boundary between the interior and medial cranial fossa. The sila tarsica is located midline of the medial cranial fossa. The bony region of the spinoid bone is named for it resemblance to horse used to the used to with a high back and the tall front. The rounded depression and the floor of the sila tarsica is the hypophysial fossa, which houses the pea size pituitary hypophysial gland. The greater wing of the spinoid bone extend laterally to either side away from the sila tarsica where they form the interior floor of the medial cranial fossa. The greater wing is best seen on the, on the outside of the lateral skull, where it forms the rectangular 
area immediately anterior to the squamous portion of the temporal bone and the inferior aspect of the skull each half of spinae bone form to thin vertically orientated bony plate these are the medial pterygoid ter plate and later medial pterygoid plate and lateral pterygoid plate the right and left medial pterygoid plate form the posterior lateral wall of the nasal cavity the somewhat the somewhat larger lateral pterygoid plate serve as attachment site for chewing muscle that fill the infratemporal space and act on the mandible and act on the mandible external occipital protuberance uh, external occipital uh, protuber protuberance as raised bump from from the posterior most part of the occipital bone extending laterally from it on either side or the superior nuchal line the inion is the highest part of dead protuberance occipital condyle look at this this is the occipital condyle or articulating process on interior margin of the foramen magnum the skull sits on the top of the first cervical vertebra the rule of the first cervical vertebra ex exim exemplified it at in at name the the atlo the atlato occipital joint allow for 15 degree of flexion it's allow for 15 degree of flexion moment of the head occur almost entirely at the joint the atlas form with the adenoidite peak in the superior surface of the lateral masses of the axis cervical cer cervical vertebra 2 the external look at this the, the external occipital crest it is also the part of the external surface of the squamous occipital as of the occipital bone it is a rich travel along the midline beginning at the external occipital protuberance and descending inferiorly to the foramen magnum that give attachment to the it give attachment to the nuchal the nuchal ligament and also the occipital condyle it is the under surface protuberance of the occipital bone and vertebra vertebra which function in articulating the articulated uh, articulating with the superior face of the atlas vertebra look at pterygoid process this is the pterygoid process that extend downward it extend downward from each side of the spinae bone near the union of its body and the greater wing that consists of the medial and lateral pterygoid plate which are fused above anteriorly and separated below by the pterygoid fissure whose edge articulate with the process of the pladian bone it's articulating with the uh, articulating with the process of uh, platen platean bone the platean process of this is the platean process of maxilla the in the human anatomy of the mouth the platean process of maxilla is a thick horizontal process of it is a thick and horizontal process of maxilla it forms the interior three quarter, quarters of the hard hard plate the horizontal plate of the platean bone making up the making of the rest making of the rest parietal foramen look at this this area as the parietal foramen this is a small foramen the parietal foramen it is the opening for the parietal emissary emissary vein which drain into the superior sagittal sinus occasionally a small branch of occipital artery can also pass through it it is located at it is located at the back part of the parietal bone close to the upper or sagittal border nuchal line look at look at this this is the nuchal the nuchal line is a four curved line on the external surface of the occipital bone the upper often faintly marked as uh, named the highest nuchal line but is sometimes referred as the mimping line it is attached to the epicranial aphoneurosis epho Fo neuro neurosis below the highest nuchal line is the superior line. Below the nuchal line, this is the superior line. The superior the superior nuchal line is also four curved line on the external surface of the occipital bone. The upper often faintly marked as name is the highest nuchal line, but at some time refer as mimping line. It's attached to the epicranial epineurosis below the highest nuchal line and the superior nuchal line. Look at this area. It shows the mistrial notch. 
It is a deep notch located on the medial side of the mystoid process. It travels within the sagittal plane running in the medial of the stereomystoid foramen, foramen, anteriorly as well as posterior and posterior, and posterior side of the mystoid process. It gives attachment to the posterior belly of the digestric muscle. Mystoid process it is a smooth conical. It is look. It is a smooth, a smooth and conical, conical projecting of bone located at the base of the mystoid area of the temporal bone. It allows the attachment of muscle such as the occipitofrontalis muscle as well as the certain muscle of the neck like the sternocleidomastoid and splenius, uh, splenius capitis muscle. Uh, muscle of the mystoid process. Stilhead process, hmm, it is also a slender pointed pieces of bone just below the ear. It projects down and forward for, uh, uh, forward from the ear. It projects down and forward from the inferior surface of the temporal bone and serve as an anchor point for so, uh, several muscles associated with the tongues and larynx. The mandible bone. Mandible bone is uh, composed of ramus, ingle, and uh, and body. Uh, body and ramus, uh, and body and ramus. Body and ramus and ingle is located inferior inferior to the maxilla. The body is horizontally curved portion that creates the lower jaw line. The ramus. Look at the ramus. The ramus. Or two vertical processes located on either side of the body. They join the body at the angle of the mandible. The posterior and lateral view of the skull show us important bones that maintain the integrity of the skull. The posterior surface protects the region of the brain that contains the occipital lobe and cerebellum. The lateral bones include the temporal and zygomatic bones, which encase the brain and provide attachment to the muscle of the, the face respectively. The zygomatic process, for instance, is a bony feature which allows for the attachment of the mister, mister, and the essential muscle of the mastication. We will also discuss the suture of the skull, which unit individual bone in the adult flies as raised bone from the posterior most part of the occipital bone extending laterally from it on the other side are the superior nuchal lines then then the inion is the highest part of the free tuberance and the inferior nuchal line it's bound on the occipital bone the bone and demarks the side of the insertion of the oblique capitis capitis superior muscle the rectus capitis posterior major and the minor muscle the border of the suboccipital triangle are marked by the oblique capitis inferior. inferior. The triangle, the triangle contains the vertebral artery just, just prior prizing the posterior altento occipital membrane. Altento occipital membrane and occipital condyle. This this condyle is our articulating process on the anterior margin of the foramen magnum. The skull side on the top of the first cervical vertebra, also known as the atlas. It was the it was the Greek who hold who hold of the sick, so the rule of the first cervical vertebra is exemplified at its name. The alteno occipital joint allows for 15 degree of flexion. Most of the head occur almost entirely at the joint palms with the with the peak and the superior surface of the lateral masses of the axis. What's the cere uh, cervical vertebra? The, lim two. the, lambdoid, the lambdoid suture, which can be described a non movable fibrous giant, which lies between the parietal and occipital bone. It name derives from the Greek letter lambda, which it is similarly shaped to. Lambda is the junction between the sagittal and lambdoid suture and corresponds to the posterior fontanelle during infancy. The posterior pontanel is a triangular and 5 inch at the this part of the close at the 2 month. At the 2 month and the lambda uh, is the lambda or also at the midline bony landmark where the lambdoid suture and sagittal suture meet between the occipital between the occipital and two between the occipital and two parietal bone. It may be a depression and therefore fl flexible. Accessory occipital bone are common near the lambda, usually associated with the lambda suture. The posterior part of the two parietal bone 
with the intervening sagittal suture or seen above below the parietal be, below the parietal bone articulate with the squamous part of the occipital bone at the limb the lambdoid suture at the lambdoid suture on the each side of the occipital bone articulate with the temporal bone and the midline of the occipital bone is a rough elevation called the external a rough elevation is called the external occipital protuberance which give attachment to muscles and the ligamentum nuchea nuchea on either side of the protuberance the superior neutral line extend the superior neutral line extend laterally toward the temporal bone that's all for today thank you for watching